back and see us too. Well, we are here today at the Adobe San Francisco headquarters, uh, having a chat about creativity, creative cloud, products, applications, video, cameras, sun, desert, lots of things happening today. But that's what happens when you're around creative people. I am the principal worldwide evangelist for Adobe's Creative Cloud, focusing primarily on our video products. My job is to really go around the world and first and foremost sort of showcase all the applications and services that are part of Creative Cloud, but especially on the video side, and then of course we focus on design and web as well. I began actually in music uh, engineering, and I studied at Berkeley College of Music and graduated from there. And uh, simultaneously and prior to that, um, I've worked in uh, as early as even the beginning of high school working in local TV studios and working on old uh, three-quarter inch pneumatic tapes, doing all kinds of tape op stuff very late at night. Started working for a small audio company uh, in Phoenix, Arizona called Centrillion that made a product called Cool Edit Pro. And we eventually were seen by Adobe and uh, acquired and thus began my, uh, my love affair with the Big Red. So it was interesting, my main presentation here today at SF Cutters, it was very nice. The organizer asked, um, because typically, uh, and I've spoken uh, at their events before, but typically they don't get a lot of audio people to come in and talk about sort of audio for video workflows. So we share all these technologies. I travel with no fewer than around four terabytes of media all the time. How we deal with these extremely large file sizes of things like Dragon 6K, Sort of unthinkable even a year and a half ago. So you can shoot RED 4K, you can shoot EPIC 5K, you can shoot Dragon 6K, drop it in our timeline and hit play and it plays. Um, that's awesome. Uh, Adobe is really at the forefront of this technology, particularly in broadcast moving forward. And we've got tools that will help you achieve your delivery goals no matter where they end up. Here it go again the old man. Here it comes. Any specific advice related to getting into post-production? I mean, first of all, it, it helps to know color theory, but for other colorists and people who work in post and check out their work, and that's where, obviously, Twitter and Facebook and today Instagram, investigating the people who do this kind of work to be inspired by them. I mean, there's so many out there, you know, watch Clint Eastwood directed movies in the early 70s, you know, Dirty Harry, 1971. Investigating your past to enlighten and inspire your future. If you look at my Behance, which is uh, Jason Levine, it's also my Twitter handle, Beetlejace, and it's really a great way, especially for students, it automatically figures out your focus based on the kinds of stuff you publish, so people can find you. Today, it's kind of expected that you shoot, you know a little bit about color, you know how to tell a story with cutting, you know how to uh, add basic, at the, at the least, lower thirds and some moving text, and you understand the concept of good design and good fonts, and you know, and again, having the sort of design element in your background. Sometimes it's nice to just commit, right? To knock things out quickly, to really try something new, to try something different, and I think between you know, diversifying your knowledge and, and really studying on some of the, the fundamentals and the history, uh, it'll make you a better overall uh, modern day new creative. Because when I came into it, you were one thing. You didn't do everything. You didn't even want to do everything. But today, you can. Strum a few strings, play a couple of keys, grab a coffee can, a pot of pan, or tap on your knees, go. You've got to just paint